Hey guys, it's Chris. From getting new mental abilities to feats of incredible strength, join me as I show you eight people who got superpowers from an accident. Number eight, Orlando Sorrell. When Orlando Sorrell was just 10 years old, he was as ordinary as ordinary could be. He was doing nothing overtly special, but was competent at everything you would expect him to be. Then one day in 1979, he was playing sports with his friends when he was hit in the head with a baseball. To be clear, he wasn't wearing a helmet when he was playing, so the baseball hit him square in the left side of his head. Anyone who knows the heft and solidarity of a baseball knows that this would cause some serious damage. And even Major League Baseball players have had serious injuries dealing with accidents like this. In regard to Sorrell, he was knocked out, but when he came to, he seemed to be fine. However, a few days later, that started to change, and he started to get headaches. They started off basic enough, but then they got more and more intense, as well as more and more frequent, causing him pain that would cripple most 10-year-olds. But Sorrell was able to keep going all the while being able to mask his pain from his parents. This is an important detail, because throughout all of this, Sorrell did not get any medical treatment for his condition. But then something happened. The headaches just stopped, which should have been the end of the story. Except that Sorrell noticed something different in his memories. Mainly, he could remember a lot more than he did before. He was able to remember various details about every single day, ever since he got hit in the head with the baseball, with clear accuracy, including noting the weather, what he ate, and what he wore that day, and much more. As if that wasn't enough of a superpower, he was also able to do what is known as calendrical calculations, which means he could predict when a certain day would fall in the week of any year. No one is sure how or why these things got rewired in his brain via the baseball hit, but his life was much different since then. Sorrell would go into the medical field and would undergo studies to see what caused his superpower to form. Number 7. Franco Magnani in the 1960s, Franco Magnani was an Italian immigrant, and he came to San Francisco in the United States in order to try and live a new life. But there was just one problem, though. Almost as soon as he arrived in the city, he became sick. Deathly sick. No one is sure what exactly, but he is documented with having a fever that was so bad it made him delirious and have seizures. This kind of illness can change a person if they're in it for too long in regard to their health, but for Franco Magnani, it changed him in his mind. Because soon after he healed from his mysterious illness, he started having vivid dreams and vivid memories about something his childhood home. Now, usually one might count this off as the memory trying to bring comfort to Magnani after his ordeal. But as he noted, he hadn't been to his childhood home of Pontito, Italy in over 30 years, which means that the memories shouldn't have been fresh or vivid. Wanting to get the memories out of his mind, he started to paint them based on what he remembered, something he rarely had done before as he was a cook and a woodworker primarily. Now, he should have been able to do something, but maybe not vivid and detailed pieces, right? Except after doing multiple pictures of incredible quality, someone went to Italy and took pictures of the places that were in the paintings. Now, aside from some perspective and zoom inconsistencies, which can be attributed to his memories via his height in childhood, they were perfect recreations. He had no reference outside of his memory, yet he was able to paint them perfectly just from memory. Magnani later became known as the memory artist and was known to sometimes drop everything mid-task because a new vivid memory had popped up in his mind that he knew he had to draw. His work is in art galleries, where they're shown next to the real-life pictures so that people can see the startling accuracy of his work. And now for number 6. But first, let me know what superpower you wish you could have in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I don't know about you, but I'd like to be Spider-Man. Number 6. Jason Paget. Much like in a comic book, there are many ways to gain a superpower in real life. But there's only one documented case in history where that superpower came after getting beaten up. In this case, via a mugging. And his name was Jason Paget. The year was 2002. And Jason Paget was having the time of his life. He had just come off a date and was leaving to go home. When all of a sudden, two men jumped him, beat him down, stole his money, and then they ran off. 
Thankfully for him, the doctors that examined him stated that all he had was a concussion and that he should go home and rest so the effects wouldn't hurt him too badly. And he did so. But a little while after he did, he started to see things that he couldn't explain. When he would go outside, he would see light hitting things like cars and leaving objects like triangles floating in the air. This sense continued to grow and nearly drove Jason Paget insane. So much so that he had multiple medical tests done to him and even had metal plates put into his head. For three years, he kept inside and to himself in order to try and fight what he saw. But eventually, he gave up and decided to draw what he saw. And it was here that his superpower was discovered. Because he wasn't just drawing random shapes, he was drawing fractals. If you don't know, fractals are complex mathematical formulas that are said to make up the world in a math sense. To see them is enough of a superpower, but Jason Paget was able to draw them in perfect clarity and precision, which is something that even math experts can't do at times. Paget would go on to study math, something he really hadn't done before, and excel at number theory. He even wrote a book called Struck by Genius, talking about his mugging and how it came to change him. Number 5. Jim Carollo In 1988, a man by the name of Jim Carollo was in a car accident, and he was 14 at the time. And while he survived, barely, his mother did not. As for Jim, while he was alive, he was in a coma, one that lasted for six weeks and had doctors wondering if he was ever going to make it out. When he woke up, it was sudden and random and much to the shock of everyone there. But because of his coma status for six weeks, plus the trauma of the car accident, he had to go do physical therapy in order to get back to his life. Yet when he did, he was a much different person mentally, especially in regard to how he handled math. Because before his accident and coma, Jim Carolla didn't do well in math and had no interest in learning it. Yet after the accident, he flew through it. Carolla would take advanced math tests without studying, and he'd get perfect scores. He was even able to do things like advanced calculus, which should have been far beyond what anyone his age could have done. He was so advanced that he was able to memorize the first 120 digits of the pi number sequence in just under a couple days. Jim Carolla would go on to fly through school with no negative effects on him outside of some short-term memory issues, which seemed odd in that this was the only negative side effect to him given everything else he was doing. Number 4. Tony Chikoria in DC Comics, the character known as Barry Allen was struck by lightning that transformed him into the fastest man alive. But for Tony Chikoria, he had a slightly different reaction when he got hit by a bolt from the blue. Just like Barry Allen though, his strike was very unexpected because during a thunderstorm, he decided to pull over and call his mother via a payphone. When the conversation was done, the lightning bolt came down, struck the phone, and electrocuted Chikoria which in fact in most cases would have ended up with him being dead on the spot. Jacoria himself thought he was dead right before coming back to life. I floated up the stairs. My consciousness came with me. I saw my kids, had the realization that they would be okay. Then I was surrounded by a blue-white light, an enormous feeling of well-being and peace. The highest and lowest points of my life raced by me. I had the perception of accelerating, being drawn up. There was speed and direction. Then, as I was saying to myself, this is the most glorious feeling I've ever had, slam, I was back. A miracle by most definitions, but what happened next was very peculiar, as after a few days of shaking off the effects of the bolt, he had an urge to listen to piano music, which he'd never done before, never even had a lesson, yet the compulsion was there. And after a while, he decided that he wanted to play the piano because he had music going on in his head that wasn't like the piano music he listened to. It was original. Eventually, he wrote his own piece called The Lightning Sonata and has performed in places all over the United States, as well as been featured on TV shows, documentaries, and more. Number 3. Derek Amato when it comes to origin stories of superpowers in real life, you could argue that Derek Amato has one of the dumbest, because back in 2006, he was at a friend's party in Denver, Colorado, and he decided to dive headfirst into their pool, which would have been fine if it was deep, but it wasn't, and so he bashed his head on the bottom of said pool. This in turn knocked him out, 
and he woke up in the hospital with the diagnosis of a severe concussion and was told by doctors that he would have severe headaches from now on. He would also have memory loss and 35% of his hearing was now gone. But to his amazement after the incident, he started to see things when he closed his eyes. Mainly, he saw shapes in the dark and they were moving in certain ways. At first, he thought it was just other images from lights, but then he realized they were musical notes and movements. As I shut my eyes, I found these black and white structures moving from left to right, which in fact would represent my mind, a fluid and continuous stream of musical notation. My fingers began to scale the piano keys as if I'd played all my life. That's my notation. When those black and white squares are going, that's what my hands do. I'm convinced it's all for a reason, and it's my job to do it right. His musical prowess goes beyond the piano, though. His musical notes gift has allowed him to play several different instruments over the years, all without having to study them. He now spends most of his days making music across various styles and instruments. Number 2. Ken Walters Ken Walters' journey to getting powers started out with some of the worst luck a person could ever have in their lives. It started with an accident that left him crippled, as his back was broken and he wouldn't be able to walk again. For the next year, he lived with incredible pain because of that accident and couldn't get out of bed as a result. He was later kicked out of his house by the government and fined for various things. All this stress led him to having two heart attacks. And then in 2005, he had a major stroke. He survived, but something curious happened as a result. When he was in the hospital, he couldn't really talk, so he wrote a note to a nurse asking for some aid. But unbeknownst to him, after his hand got done writing the note, it then started to draw on the paper, all on its own. Walters had never been an artist and spent 20 years jobless and thus couldn't afford any art classes or lessons. Yet here he was drawing something subconsciously. The drawings were good too and he would wake up at odd hours during the night because some new image had popped into his head and he felt the urge to draw it. According to his doctor, his stroke rewired his brain to help prevent damage, which is typical, believe it or not, but usually it manifests in personality changes, whereas here it gave him great artistic ability. The doctor also said that it would be temporary except that it wasn't. Walters continued to draw and eventually went into graphic design, which is where he became famous because he would sell his art online and he became a huge hit via the online game Second Life. This led to companies like IBM and more buying his abstract and detailed art pieces. Eventually, he would get another video game to buy his art. The company Electronic Arts saw his work and hired him to make some of their creatures for their hit game Spore, all because of a stress-induced stroke. Number 1. Tommy McHugh Tommy McHugh was not a nice man. He lived most of his life in a very violent way, as well as a very dangerous way. He would get into fights at bars, he would do an assortment of drugs, and he was known to be a jerk in his personal life. Then he went to the hospital one day to deal with severe headaches, and he found out that he had two aneurysms in his head, and both had ruptured. This led to having immediate surgery, with some odd side effects. At first, he could only speak in rhyme, and this lasted for a few months. Then he would have random images flash through his mind as a slideshow as he would describe it. He became so fed up with the images that he started to write them down, and much to the surprise of his wife, they were actually quite artistic. But the problem was that the creativity was like an obsession of the worst kind. It became manic of sorts, forcing Tommy McHugh to write something, then draw something, then sculpt something, eventually covering his entire house in art because he needed to draw it. Eventually, he got doctors to take a look at him, and they confirmed that his previous condition caused damage to his frontal lobe, giving him what he had now. He is still doing his art pieces, and he's making quite a living off them, including having them be displayed in galleries. Another interesting side effect, though, is that he became a much nicer person after dedicating himself to his art. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these real life people who got true superpowers by accident? Can you believe that there are this many of them in history who can claim to have real superpowers? Which of these do you think you'd like to have? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.